Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another ramble rant kind of video. Because a few weeks ago I released a video about the Wizard of the Coast OGL drama that was going on, on the internet. How I thought it was a bit overblown. And that video has been one of my more successful recently, getting three or four times the amount of views of one of my normal videos. But also an absolutely massively hated one, getting many many dislikes and many many insults in the comment section including me being accused of being a corporate shill for Wizards of the Coast. Which, wouldn't that involve money flowing one way or the other? I don't know how corporate shilling works, but I would have thought they'd have paid me, which would be nice, if they would like to. I'll accept brown envelopes stuffed with cash at any point. But that video I've not commented on much more, because there was no more information. There was a version of the OGL released that people said was the proper one, but there was no evidence attached to that. Nobody willing to say, oh, I work for such and such a corporation and I received this. It was just a document. Now, there's certain things in that document which make it real or look credible, but again, they could just be cribbed off different sources. So it wasn't until Wizards of the Coast released a statement yesterday that I've decided to actually make a video and follow that up. So let's go over to the desktop and have a look at that statement and I'll make a few comments, thoughts I've had about it. So this is the press release they issued yesterday, one day ago, an update to the open game license. Now I'm going to read through parts of it and I'm going to comment on them. I'm not going to read through all of it because some of it's pretty boring and I have nothing to say. But We'll carry on. An update on the open gaming license. When we initially conceived of revising the OGL, it was three major goals in mind. First, we wanted the ability to prevent the use of D&D content from being included in hateful and discriminatory products. Well, this seems like a clear snipe at Ernie Gygax and TSR 3, I think people refer to it at, who was bringing back Star Frontiers with their Star Frontiers Legends or whatever version it is they were coming out with, without licensing it, claiming that Wizard of the Coast bought TSR, they bought all the license, but then they abandoned Star Frontiers, and Ernie Gygax has some kind of claim to it because he's the son of the guy who originally founded the company. Which would be like some Disney grandson claiming that they own Mickey Mouse. Because I haven't seen a Mickey Mouse cartoon in ages, so, the license has been abandoned? Now, Wizard of the Coast has been selling Star Frontier stuff on drive through RPG. So, has been actively promoting and selling the old products and profiting off them. So, in no way has abandoned the line. But, Ernie Gygax decided to bring out Star Frontiers, and apparently some of it's pretty racist and pretty horrible. Um, making comments about various races being lesser than others, like it is in the real world, apparently it says, which is disgusting stuff, and I can understand Wizard of the Coast not wanting to be connected to that. So, updating the OGL while they're doing other parts of it makes sense. They don't want racist, they don't want discriminatory material. I'm fully behind that. Second, we wanted to address those attempting to use D&D in Web3, blockchain games, and NFTs, making clear that OGL content is limited to tabletop role-playing content like campaigns, modules, and supplements. Again, seems fair. If these digital things, which aren't really creating anything, I don't think anybody pretends that NFTs add anything at all to creation. There's nothing. It's just an encrypted URL, basically, and they're selling other people's artwork. Um, that people shouldn't be able to do that, that Wizards of the Coast can control what they created. Again, seems absolutely fair. And third, we wanted to ensure the OGL is for creator content, for the content creator, the home brewer, the aspiring designer, our players and the community, not major corporations for use in their own commercial and promotional purpose. Again, that seems pretty fair. That other companies shouldn't be able to bring out Dungeons & Dragons content because they're releasing it on the OGL. You know, there shouldn't be Dungeons & Dragons games, video games released by anybody that doesn't license it. This all seems quite sensible to me. 
Um, I have no complaints with any, complaints with any of their aims here. Um, I do have comments further down which are a bit critical of them. Driving these goals for two simple purposes. Our goal was to be good stewards of the game and the OGL exists for the benefit of the fans. Nothing about these principles wavered for a second. That is why our early drafts of the new OGL included the provisions they did. That draft language provided to content creators and publishers their feedback could be considered before anything was finalised. Well, that seems fair as well. They released it out to some people to get comments, and one of those people leaked it, and everybody lost their heads and panicked because this license wasn't what they hoped it to be. Well, I hope the content creators who received copies put commentary back that they didn't think it was positive. I don't know whether that was going to have any effect on Wizard of the Coast, but the leaking has had that effect. So, Wizards probably are being a bit dishonest here that they were going to seriously change it. They were hoping to get the license out and nobody would make too many comments. I think the reality of the situation is. It was never our intent to impact the vast majority of the community. I actually do believe that sentence. I don't think they wanted people writing adventures and putting on their website to stop doing that because they want free content because they want people to buy the books and have access to all this other work that other people have done this isn't something that wizard of the coast wants to block they want you to be creating content for their game to sell their game <laughs> it's clear for action we all rolled a one the next OGL will contain the provisions that allow us to protect and cultivate the inclusive environment we are trying to build, and specify that it covers only content for TTRPGs. That means other expressions such as educational and charitable campaigns, live streams, cosplay, VTT uses, will remain unaffected by any OGL update. So all the panic about virtual tabletops were going to have to be scrapped turns out not to be going to happen at all. Um, I find it interesting if I flick for a moment to the wording of the OGL that I don't think cosplay was mentioned. Um, it does not allow for anything else, including but not limited to video, virtual tabletops or VTT campaigns, computer games, novels, apps, graphic novels, music, songs, dances and pantomimes. So they don't really mention cosplay. But they did mention pantomimes, which seems a very UK thing. I'm not sure if you get them in America much, but pantomimes are a big Christmas thing in the UK. Why they would name it, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, what it will not contain is any royalty structure. It will not also include the license back provision that some people are afraid were a means for us to steal work. That thought never crossed our minds. Right, this is where I call them liars. Because if we flick to the terms and conditions on D&D Beyond. So at the bottom of the page, you click terms and conditions and it takes you to this web page. Which, a couple of paragraphs down, license to wizards. By posting or submitting any user content to or through the websites, games or services, you grant... You hereby irrevocably grant to Wizards a worldwide, perpetual, irrevocable, royalty-free, non-exclusive, and fully sub-licensed we license to use, reproduce, modify, adapt, publish, translate, create, derivative works from, distribute, perform, and display such user content in whole or in part in any media and to incorporate the user content into other works in any format or medium now known or later developed. So that's the exact wording from the OGL that people were worried about. Wizards already wrote that. This license is dated, if we scroll right up to the top, May 17th, 2022. So it has been in power, uh, has been in effect for coming up on eight months now. So if they claim that they never had this desire, why have they had a license in effect for those words, for everything you put on D&D Beyond for the last eight months? You know, everything you put up there is affected by this. So if you're uploading artwork for your character, if you're uploading descriptions, if you're creating custom magic items, classes, whatever, they're all under this license already. So I call them liars on this. Going back. Um, we won't. Any language we put down will be crystal clear and unequivocal on that point. The license pack language was intended to protect us and our partners from creators who incorrectly allege we steal their work simply because of coincidental similarities. 
again, I can completely understand that. There were other parts in the OGL which kind of explained that, that while you were submitting items, you were allowing them to publish things which were similar, because people have similar ideas. You see a movie, it triggers something in your head, while well, somebody on the other side of the planet is seeing the same movie and having the same idea triggered in their head. Doesn't mean you're copying one another, it means you're both being inspired by the same source for the same idea. So I completely get that. Um, it's why a number of people don't accept submissions. Um, I can't remember whether it's Star Wars, maybe Doctor Who, something science fiction where if you send them a script that you think is a good idea they return it unopened they refuse to look at anything so there is never any claim that they read it and were inspired to create something else and just not pay you your licensing fee they um, pay you for your hard work um next year our jail will put Contain the provisions that allow us to protect and cultivate the inclusive environment we're trying to build. Um, I've read that bit before. New OGA will contain provisions to address that risk, and we'll do it without a license back and without suggesting we have rights to the content you create. Your ideas and imagination will make the game special, and that belongs to you, which is very nice. A couple of last thoughts. Firstly, we won't be able to release the new OGL today because we need to make sure we get it right. It is coming. Now, lots of people on videos in the internet are screaming about this. Of course you can release it. No, you pay your lawyers to write it. There's no reason for the new OGL to get released anyway until the next edition of Dungeons & Dragons, when things change. Now, that's not coming out until, what, 2024, 2025? It's a couple of years off. So why do we need the licensing which pertains to that edition of Dungeons & Dragons now? They've got time to rewrite it. They've got time before it comes into effect. Um, second, you're going to hear people say they won and we lost because making your voices heard forced us to change our plans. Those people will only be half right. They won and so did we. Which is a nice way of saying it. I don't think they actually believe that. <laughs> they kind of believe they lost. They've lost a lot of PR, goodwill. Um, and they are struggling to win that back. Uh, our plan was always to solicit the input of the community before any update to the OGL. The drafts you were seen were attempting to do just that. Well, it was leaked, so it kind of wasn't. Um, again, I think they're being a bit dishonest here, but it's a corporation, and I don't think they're going to own up and go, yeah, you just caught us. We were trying to get one over us on you. Our goal was to get exactly the type of feedback which proved on which provisions worked and which did not, which we ultimately got from you. Any change this major could only have been done well if we were willing to take that feedback, no matter how it was provided, so we are. Thank you for caring enough to let us know what works and what doesn't, what you need and what scares you. Without knowing that, we can't do our part to make the new OGL match our principles. Finally, we'd appreciate the chance to make this right. We'd, we love D&D's devoted players and the creators who take them on so many incredible adventures. We won't let you down. Well, I hope they don't. So... I think that some of the things I said in my last video have been proven right. Um, that they won't make any massive changes which will throw the community against them. Because they're being powered by that community. I think I've been proven an idiot on the internet, as I often am, who's just wittering away. And you should just take my, my opinions with the value of any other idiot on the internet. A point I've skipped is, they say up here, that's the bit I was looking for, content already released under 1.0a will remain unaffected. So the elements about scrapping the old OGL are completely put to the side. Now, I've seen opinions on the wording of the OGL that was released, that it insinuates that it only covers the next... Um, source file so it doesn't affect the older ones if they were trying to get rid of the older OGL then they'd be getting rid of the ability to publish any of the older versions of Dungeons and Dragons so Pathfinder and everything released for that would kind of be out of the window because the OGL only would let you release stuff 
for the latest version of the Dungeons and Dragons. Um, we obviously will never see that in court now, but I think it was an interesting look and possibly one of the biggest proofs that this was just a proof of concept document. It wasn't the final version. Now, finally, because the OGL was being seen as an endangered species, shall we say, lots of other companies have jumped out. Um, Peso, particularly the publishers of Pathfinder, have released their Orc, their open source roleplay content license, I think it is, or Orc, for simplicity. And they, with a bunch of other people there, Kobold Press, Green Ronin, Legendary Games, and now Chaosium themselves, a big boy, have all come out and supported that license. But while that's an interesting thing, that there's now an open license which is independent to D20, because one of the big questions about the OGL getting updated was, what about all the games which are nothing to do with the Wizards of the Coast, which were released under the OGL? I think even the old D6 system by West End Games was released under the OGL to a certain degree to make it open D6. But none of that content is anything to do with the Coast. So how they could update a licensing package for somebody else's product, we didn't know. So having a totally independent one, which is nothing to do with any incorporation, is a really good idea. But my question is, why didn't people release this six months ago? Why didn't they release it three weeks ago? They are just reacting and trying to get good press off Wizards of the Coast, bad press. They are being large corporations and doing uh, press releases on you. They're trying to make us think that they're the good guys. Where again, they're just trying to publicize their games and they're just trying to get money out of our pockets by getting us to create stuff and freely advertise their products. They are no better, they are no worse than Wizards of the Coast. They're exactly the same. And one of the others, Modifius, I got an email through yesterday, if I scroll up, for the 2D20 World Builders. Welcome to the 2D20 World Builders Community Content Program. And they are releasing this very much like the Open Game License. They're talking about opening up their system. It's time to get your creative caps on. Modifius Entertainment 2D20 World Builders Program allows creators from all over the world to design their own role-playing games, supplements, characters, and more using their popular 2D20 system. This is a fantastic opportunity for you to get your wildest creations in front of an enthusiastic community of players. And it's all incredibly easy. And we scroll down and they've got download the system reference document. Well, there's a system reference document for the OGL, which defines everything that everybody's allowed to look at. Um, or, sorry, everything everybody's allowed to use, free of charge. You know, you're allowed to use elves and orcs and things because they are basically uncopyrightable, but beholders and the like remain the ownership of Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons and Dragons. So this has a system reference document. They've got creator resources, um, art pack from um, Acton Cthulhu, their content guidelines, content knowledge base, how to publish your content. It's all fantastic stuff. And actually seems a lot more driven than Wizards of the Coast to get you to publish your stuff. They are putting some effort in here. Um, I don't think this is as reactionary as the Orc license. I think this is something that Modifius has probably been planning for a while. But, again, bringing to attention. So, in the due to... 2d20 world builders guidelines we scroll down can i sell the content i create as a creator you get 50 percent of the sale so if your product retails for ten dollars the split is five band goes to you or five dollars goes to you three dollars goes to drive through rpg you have to sell it through that platform and two dollars goes to modifius you get 50 percent now they're promising below that they're going to put the money they get into creating art assets that creators can use free of charge. They're going to build up a support system using the money that's coming in to help creators create their own games, modules, adventures, campaigns, whatever. Now, that'll be interesting to see whether that happens. 
But this is a far more monetarily restrictive system than Wizards of the Coast even were planning in their now abandoned version of the OGL. This proof of concept which they have thrown to the side. Because that was only taxing you if you, or getting you to pay them a licensing fee if you earned over a certain amount, and was really only going to hit you if you were earning, earning over three quarters of a million. Whereas if you sell one copy for ten dollars, Modifius wants you to pay out three dollars to drive through RPG and two dollars to them. So you're getting a 50% tax or a 50% licensing fee straight on top okay they are providing some extra services they are providing art assets they are providing support to get your products to the market they are providing a platform for you to sell things through but it's still hell of a fee for you to have to pay out whether you want to take advantage of those assets or not anyway that's just a quick update or not so quick i suppose so I guess I've witted on for quite long enough, as usual. Uh, we shall see if this is as popular, and this is as controversial as my first video. We'll see how much hatred I get. Anyway, I've witted on for long enough, so thank you very, very much for watching. But most of all, as always, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now.